just as I continue to gather information about my state of presence, my state of awareness and groundedness throughout the massage. It's not something that we do just at the beginning of the massage. It begins at the beginning of the massage. The one thing that fades a lot into the background is him checking me out. If I'm doing my work right, he starts paying attention to the sensations in his body fairly quickly. Once he's satisfied, then I know what I'm doing. Stretching a little more time here. Just that very subtle gesture that his body made that indicated to me, even before he said anything, he kind of went like that. That was an indication of something. And then I checked in and went, is, is that your limit? And he said, yes. So there's nothing that happens in the body that does not have meaning. Sometimes it can be difficult or the meaning is different than we might imagine. You know, someone might do that and I'm thinking, oh, that's his limit, and it's like, no, he just needed to swallow. Right? But it has meaning. Every movement, every gesture has some kind of meaning. It just feels like his tissue, his muscle tissue, his connective tissue is drinking the energy of my work in, sort of like a thirsty person getting a nice glass of water. It's just this sense of... Now I'm remembering a piece of information that he gave me in our interview that he's having trouble with his sciatic nerve. Is that left or right, Kristen? When you're right where I am. So you see this area in his lower back is opening really nicely. I'm going to be very, a bit more of an advanced move. So I'm going to check in with him because of the bone-to-bone -bone contact. Is that feeling good? Mm. Yeah. Could you hear in the tone of voice? Mm. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to drop into the area where the sciatic nerve comes close to the surface, or closer to the surface, I should say. It's actually buried quite deeply in underneath the gluteus maximus here. Sometimes even surrounded by the piriformis as it finds its way through the piriformis in some cases. Mostly it emerges out from underneath the piriformis. Pace and pressure. Yeah. Could you hear in his voice the difference? <coughs> kind of went, yeah, like that. Could you hear that slight sort of, oh, I'm paying extra attention because the sensation was getting kind of edgy? Ida Rolf said, it's always in the voice. You want to know the state of your client, listen to their voice. Not necessarily the content of their speech, but the tone of voice. going to pass. The 
brain in relationship to patterns of movement is highly conservative. It selects over time a postural habit or a pattern of movement and it likes the familiarity of that, the predictability of it, the repeatability of that. That has very high survival value. And these patterns live in the most archaic portions of our brains, in the spinal cord and in the brain stem. And those areas are designed to say no first. And they need to check something out over a period of time in order to shift and change, which is why postural habits are not easy to change. You can't just do it. You will fall into old habits very quickly, over and over and over again. Changing the way you walk, changing the way you stand is not easy. It takes time. So it's the same thing with body work. When I reach areas that are contracted or dense due to old postural habits, I need to move slowly. I need to create relationship with the spinal cord, with the brain stem, through the doorway of the muscle spindles that we learned about in our anatomy classes. I need to use their attention patterns as a way of waking the brain stem and spinal cord up to itself. 